for the grand total of $25.67 on eBay. I picked up this Nitro Security Nitro View. Uh, it says it's the NS-NRC-1225. Uh, from what I have read online, the Nitro View line is designed to basically just catalog information from other Nitro security devices. So you would have like your firewalls throughout your, your company and this is basically a manager receiving all the, the information. Uh, the hardware in this is pretty much the same as most of the other um, 1U units we've uh, taken a look at. But uh, yeah, I'll admit it was because of the fancy orange. Yep, I saw the orange and went, eh, I should try and pick that up. And since it was only 25 bucks, I figured that was a pretty good deal since I did manage to find a data sheet on this and it said that it had a uh, 500 gig hard drive. So I figured, uh, oh, and I could see in the, the um, pictures that the warranty seal wasn't tampered with. So I figured it was uh, worth it just to, you know, even if I just get the hard drive and resell the hard drive, it would probably be okay. Around back, there's a pretty standard complement of ports. We've got a 1U power supply. We've got PS2 ports, two USB 2 ports, serial, VGA, two Ethernet listed as management one and two. And uh, just a slot for a card, even though there's no riser installed in this particular model. The top just slides right off, uh, although there were a couple screws in it originally. And we can see an incredibly clean system. Uh, we've just got the uh, Supermicro motherboard here. 500 gig server drive from Seagate, power supply, uh, one fan in the entire unit aside from the one inside the power supply. Uh, it's a very, very loud blower fan, like ridiculously loud with a nice shroud uh, that just blows right over the CPU. Nice, heavy copper heat sink, pretty standard uh, super micro one. And uh, actually we'll just take this whole thing off because I think this just pops right off. There we go, nice shroud. And there's even a little plastic shroud uh, here. Like I think it's just guiding a little bit of air over the, uh, the voltage regulator. So uh, it's pretty standard, very nice heavy copper heat sink from Supermicro, fully populated memory. Uh, in this case, it's eight gigs of memory, which is uh, pretty good. Uh, it's a DDR2-667 uh, ECC memory, and uh, there's a riser card slot here. I actually just recently threw away both my, uh, I had a couple spare riser cards from Supermicro. Threw those away recently, so uh, can't use that. PCI slot, which <laughs> looks a little out of place. Like, why would there be a vertical slot here, and then you have the riser one over here, but whatever. And a whole bunch of... Um, Serial ATA connections, in this case six, only one of them is used. You can see all these wires coming from the crystal fonts display on the front. They connect to various points such as the wake on LAN, uh, power, USB, that sort of thing to power the unit on and let you control it. When I got this, it did not power on automatically and the, there seems to be something wrong with either, maybe these got moved or the, the front panel display is just not set up properly because it just it does not power on. You have to short these pins on the motherboard to simulate a power button. Uh, other than that, it worked fine. Uh, system boots normally to a point. I was able to get it to boot up and it would just hang at one certain point. So I think there's just the, the install screwed up. I originally wasn't sure if this had any real use on it because at first I didn't open this up, like there is a bit of dust in here. But with the shroud on, you really can't tell if this thing's brand new or not. But when I took the hard drive out to check it in my computer, I saw that it had like 43,000 hours on it. So yeah, this server has been running a lot. And it only had like 11 start-stop cycles. So this thing's basically been started up and left running for years. And... Uh, yeah, um, you know, if it's in a really nice uh, data center or whatever, it's going to be very clean on the inside, despite having a ridiculously loud blower fan. Uh, I do like the design, like how this is loose, so it, it has like anti-vibration properties. There's a foam pad under it. 
and uh, it's actually a PWM controlled fan. It's a very, very nice fan. It's made by uh, um, Delta, but it's just so loud. This thing's ridiculous. I'm not even going to plug it in. It's so loud. It sounds like a vacuum cleaner. Uh, you can go into the BIOS settings and tell it to uh, throttle down the, the fan because you can, um, on super micro boards, it'll have an option for four pin workstation, four pin server. And in, by default, it's usually set server. Server is just run it full time all the time. So uh, yeah, you can set it to workstation and it'll throttle the uh, fan down a bit. This motherboard, despite being a nice super micro board, does not actually have its fancy polymer cap, so it's a little bit older. I believe it's a quad-core Intel Core 2. Uh, I think it's the 6600 series, but we'll take the heatsink off in a bit. This does support Xeon chips. They just happen to put a core chip in here instead of a Xeon. It does support Xeons. But uh, yeah, it's a half-decent system for 25 bucks. I mean... It's a little overkill for like a router, but if, uh, if you needed it for, um, you know, just some kind of remote server, you know, even if this thing was just sitting here and coding, it actually wouldn't be that bad. I mean, you got a quad core chip, you've got um, tons of memory, you just, you have the one hard drive, so it wouldn't be very good for a NAS, but in its current setup, it would, it would actually be pretty decent if you just needed something to sit there and render if you didn't care about electricity. Uh, although it is an 80 plus certified power supply. Well, I said I wasn't going to power it up, but I did. I uh, disconnected the hard drive and just plugged in this SSD, which has a, a copy of Windows 8 on it. So I just powered that up and just fooled around with it for a little bit. Ran Cinebench, that sort of thing. Um, it seemed to perform fairly well. I mean, the single core performance is pretty awful, but um, quad core wasn't too bad. And uh, the system gets a little warm on the other uh, components, the, the stuff that's not covered by the heat sink over here. But, um, sorry, not covered by the fan shroud. But other than that, it uh, performed quite well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, think I'm going to take everything apart so we can take a closer look at everything. Inside the front of the case, you can see that there is actually the, uh, the crystal fonts. This is a CFA 533, pretty standard one used in uh, these kinds of servers. They've got nice little wire straps with little stick-on things, even though these things are pretty lousy. They do tend to uh, just fall off over time, as a couple of them inside the case did. And they're just routing the cable through the front. And you've just got the little USB connection and the uh, this is the multi-way connection to the different points on the board. They're actually just GPIO pins. So this board is the Supermicro X7 SBI and it's a standard um, ATX board. It just has the low profile, uh, the angled riser. So it's really designed for a 1U case. And uh, despite it kind of looking like it, it's not actually warped. It's just got the back plate for the CPU uh, heatsink mount. So it just looks, <laughs> it looks a little warped, but I actually, I actually checked because it fooled me. I thought I started thinking it was actually the, the, the motherboard that was all warped, but it's not. Uh, the CPU is, a, is actually the um, Intel uh, Core 2 Q9400. I thought it was like a 6000 series. But it's a 1333 megahertz front side bus, 95 watts, quad core, uh, 2.66 gigahertz. So it's a fairly powerful chip. It's the uh, uh, Intel LGA 775 chipset or socket. So um, it's it's not bad. Unfortunately, the maximum amount of memory this thing supports is eight gigabytes, but conveniently it's already included. So uh, 
yeah, it's a, it's a half decent motherboard. Uh, you've got a socket here for the um, management chip, the IPMI uh, controller, but they haven't fit it in this one. And uh, yeah, that's about it. It's got uh, six three gigabit ethernet or um, serial ATA ports, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's got old school connections like parallel ATA and floppy, which is always convenient. Six fan headers, which is great. One thing I noticed about the CPU is, uh, well, they've got the angled CPU socket on this one. Now, a lot of super micro boards use this extremely heavy passive heat sink. But one thing I noticed is that look where all these solid caps are. They are way close to the CPU. They put the caps too close. So they sh shredded off part of the heat sink. Can you believe that? So you can't use a regular heat sink. What if you get a regular fan? It won't fit. Ugh. Come on, Super Micro. You're better than that. So it does fit, but only in one orientation and only theirs because it's got this stupid cutout. So I'm obviously going to have to sell this board altogether and, you know, just warn whoever buys it that uh, they're pretty much stuck with this passive heatsink. Unfortunately, I mean, it is possible a standard cooler would somehow fit around that, but I don't see how. I mean, this is above the CPU right here. The rest of the caps on the board are Suncon, so not great. It's actually not the best board I've seen from Supermicro. They do make really good boards. It's just for some reason they put this stupid capacitor placement in, even though they are nice solid capacitors. They put this stupid capacitor placement and they have these cheap caps on the rest of the board. So that's that's kind of disappointing. I expect better from them. Power supply is made by Supermicro. It's the PWS2011H and it's a uh, 200 watt power supply. And uh, it's fairly quiet when you run it on its own. And... Uh, yeah, it's just got the 8-pin um, EPS power connector, and this is the shorter style ATX power connector. And as for drive connections, it's got one Molex, one serial ATA. And it's funny that they did add an adapter to it because the hard drive was so close to the fan, they needed a right-angled serial ATA power connector. It's funny how they have to add one to every single one they sell just because the power supply connector doesn't fit properly. It seems weird considering Supermicro is making all of it. You would think it would uh, it would be something that was compatible, but this might just be like some kind of leftover power supply design. But either way, it seemed a little weird that they'd have to put in an adapter in every single one they sell. And uh, last up is just the uh, hard drive. It's just a uh, Seagate Constellation ES, which is a uh, this particular one's a uh, 500 gig. They're uh, 7,200 RPM server drives, if I recall. Nothing uh, too interesting. I'm not a fan of Seagate, so this baby's gonna go on eBay, especially with 40,000 hours on it. When I bought this, I wasn't really expecting much. I knew it would be a pretty standard server from what I read. It's task, tasks were it wasn't uh, doing anything like fancy encryption or anything like that. Plus, um. The pictures were detailed enough on the eBay listing to know that there wasn't a card in the slot, that sort of thing. So I knew it was just going to be a standard super micro build with a uh, nice orange paint job on the front. But uh, yeah, for 25 bucks, I think it's half decent. And uh, yeah, it is really loud though with this fan. And uh, it doesn't leave you many options to swap the fan out. So uh, unless you just run it at a slow speed. It's uh, it's really loud. This fan is ridiculous. So, uh, yeah. But again, for twenty five bucks, if you just need some kind of server to do some kind of uh, somewhat CPU heavy job, it's uh, pretty good for twenty five bucks.